الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة واصيلا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا محمد بشر وليس كالبشر بل هو ياقوتة والناس كالحجر محمد بشر وليس كالبشر بل هو ياقوتة والناس كالحجر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم تسليما كيف ترقى رقيك الأنبياء يا سماء ما طاولتها سماء لم يساوك في علاك وقد حال سنا منك دونهم وسناء إنما مثل صفاتك للناس كما مثل النجوم الماء أنت مصباح كل فضل فما تصدر إلا عن ضوئك الأضواء وأنت محيا كالشمس منك مضيء أسفرت عنه ليلة غراء ليلة المولد الذي كان للدين سرورا بيومه وازدهاء وتوالت بشر الهواتف أن قد ولد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم فحق الهناو اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم from طيبة السلام عليكم من المدينة السلام عليكم from طابة السلام عليكم from المستطابة السلام عليكم from the beloved city to نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله الحمد لله we praise Allah that we are from the ummah of سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم this is an enough honor for me and you and to everyone that we are as a part from the Ummah, we are members from the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lama da'a Allahu da'ihi lita'atihi bi akram al-khalqi kunna akram al-umami. When Allah azza wa jal called his servant, and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the best of servants, we were given the title that the best of people, the best of followers, the best of Ummahs, to follow the best of people. And this was given to us because of the honor that we are the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is something very important that we should keep in our mind every day. We praise Allah. Alhamdulillah anna min ummat Sayyidina Muhammad. Alhamdulillah that we praise Allah. We are from the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa kafa biha ni'mah. And this is enough blessing. This is the... This is the blessings by itself. All of it comes together. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal, before he created anything, there was a time only Allah azza wa jal. There is nothing with Allah, nothing before Allah, nothing after Allah azza wa jal. So Allah took a small portion of his light, and that light was Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then from there, Allah Azza wa Jal created every other thing. So everything, me, you, the whole universe is created from the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why when Allah Azza wa Jal replaced the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad, when he replaced Sayyidina Muhammad in the form of a light, into Sayyidina Adam when he created Adam, Allah commanded the Malaika to make sujood for Adam alayhi salam. And that sujood was not counted to be shirk, although that they are making sujood to a creation of Allah azza wa jal. An insan, they're making sujood to an insan. And sujood 
this is the highest rank of ibadah, of taslim. Like when you worship something, when we worship Allah Azza wa Jal, we keep Allah in our mind, we remember Allah Azza wa Jal, we, 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 yani, you know that as a Muslims, how we think of our relation with Allah Azza wa Jal. But when it comes to actual move that we need to do, we make salah. So when we make salah, it's like we make, you know, Allahu Akbar. So that's like a level of surrendering, giving yourself to Allah Azza wa Jal. And then when you bow, this is like a higher level for surrendering yourself to Allah Azza wa Jal. But when you make sujood, you are in a complete state of surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal. So this an act by itself, this is the highest state of ibadah, of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal says, I'm only closing to my servant, like the closest point of me and my servant is while he's in his sujood. Because actually you're on highest rank of your like surrendering, giving yourself to Allah Azza wa Jal and be as a servant and a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah commanded the malaika to make sujood for Sayyidina Ibrahim, uh, for, Say, uh, for Adam alayhi salam. And that sujood is an act, you should only do it to the like, to Allah, the one that who we worship, but yet Allah is commanding them to make it to Sayyidina Adam because the nur of Allah is in Sayyidina Adam and that nur is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the malaika made sujood for Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. So the nur, Sayyidina Muhammad, in a form of a nur, he was transmitted all the way down from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, going through the bodies of the believers, muwahideen lillah azza wa jal. All of them believed in Allah azza wa jal. And all of them, they knew the prophecy of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was coming down all the way until it reached to the blessed mother, as Sayyida Amina radiallahu anha the one that gave birth to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And really, we should thank Sayyida Amina to, for giving the birth of Nabi Muhammad this rahmah. She's a rahmah by herself. If she could produce such a rahmah on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was born in Mecca and then also raised in Mecca, grew up in Mecca, and then he been forced to move to Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have two cities in the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is Mecca and then Medina. So my speak tonight, inshallah, will be about the impact of the hijrah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moving from Mecca to Medina. But to have a better understanding of the situation and like the how it used to be in Medina in Mecca, we're going to speak a bit about Mecca. So before we go into the session of the Hijrah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal, if He wants something, He will make the reasons for it. One of the reasons of the Hijrah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the people of Mecca, they denied Him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they wanted to kill the Prophet Muhammad. So Allah commanded Nabi, Ya Muhammad, you should leave Mecca and migrate to Medina. Now, and Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He's a Rasul lil Alameen. He's a messenger to the mankind, to the ants and to the jinn. So Nabi Muhammad need to be coming from a public place, from a public city, a city that everyone knows. So when he become a messenger, that city will be the best place to spread the news of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So from day one, from the time of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jal prepared Mecca. People were feeling Mecca, this is the most important city. For the sake of religion, like there is the house of Lord in Mecca, the Kaaba, and the other reason that Mecca was like international business meeting point. So all the merchants, like the, the people with business, they will move, they will come down to Mecca. There was a big market going on in Mecca every year, like in I think Suq Uqad, if I'm not mistaken. So that made Mecca a very famous city. But at the same time, Allah Azza wa Jal is preparing Mecca so that Mecca will become so famous, so people will know where the Prophet will come from. And at the same time, Allah is keeping Medina away from people. It's like a hidden treasure at that time. No one was knowing about Medina. And the reason for that, this is the point that I wanted to make clear tonight, inshallah, bi tawfiqillah Azza wa Jal. The reason for that, the nature of the city of Medina. If you look at it, 
Now when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's 53 years old. This is when he was forced to leave Mecca into Medina. He's been like, what, like there's so many people chasing him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a hundred camels on his head. He's the most wanted Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's leaving Mecca, it appears to be like for good. There is no come back to Mecca. That's at the beginning of the Hijrah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when Nabi Muhammad, if you put yourself in the shoes of Nabi Muhammad, I mean the logic mind, if you think of it, you will choose a city that could at least provide you with like security. You could feel safe there. So Medina, this is the wrong place. This is the wrong option for people to use to come to Medina. And the reason for that, now the name of the city Medina, as we know before the Prophet comes to Medina, it's called Yathrib. So that's one of the old name of Medina, Yathrib. This name was given to Medina based on the first people that moved and settled at Medina where the, with their leader. His name was Yathrib. He is the fifth grandson in lineage to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. So he moved to Medina. He stayed with his people in Medina and Medina was named after him. His name was Yathrib. So they called the place Yathrib, referring to him like an honor for him. So, but in the Arabic language, the word Yathrib means the, the place of like, to be blamed, like to blame someone, like you say, athraba alayya, he blamed me. And then also, like if there is a fat goat, you call it like shatun tharba, like a goat with so much fat on it. This is actually as a negative sign of the goat. So people, if you're gonna buy, you wouldn't buy it because of the extra fat on it. And the other thing, the other meaning for the word yathrib, it means the place where all the disease and bad things will be like gathering together. So actually in Medina, Yathrib itself, people before they come to Medina, before the time of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when people who like whenever they come to Medina, they will stay in Medina for three days. They will have this viva, which they don't understand why it's coming to them. And then they will die because of it. So that's made Yathrib unwanted for the people. It's like unless there is a reason taking you to Medina, people wouldn't just come cross by Medina because the news about Medina and what people were hearing about Medina. This is before the Hijrah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is only now the literal meaning of the word Yathrib. So if we're gonna change that into an English, Yathrib will be badness, all right? And then if you're gonna go down to the community at the city of Medina, there were five main tribes in Medina. Three were Jewish tribes, two were Arabs, Al-Aws wal Khazraj. In the two Arabs tribe, they were fighting all along together. In the three Jewish tribe, they were like, you know, putting the fire for the conflict between the two Arabic tribes so that they will make sure that these guys, they won't be united and then they won't come against us. So now, an Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's gonna move to Medina. The name of the city, it called Badness, all right? The community that's staying at the city, three tribes, they are Jewish people, and they're staying in Medina because they had a prophecy that the last prophet will be emerging from Medina. And everyone knows that, and the Jewish people, they were so clear about it. So like to everyone, so now when Nabi, if he's gonna go to Medina and say, I'm a prophet, that will cause him a, a problem with the Jewish community in Medina because you're coming to take our honor, all right? And then if he would go to the Arabic tribes that were staying in Medina, Aus and Khazraj, the two of them, they're not friends anymore. They have like this conflict was going like for almost 40 years. So if he goes to Khazraj, maybe the Aus will feel like in a way just to get, you know, to make the, uh, the other side angry. They will go to Mecca, like, come, let's all get Muhammad and, you know, deal with it. So this is a wrong community for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to choose to come into Medina. The third thing, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's coming into Medina with his camel, the Qaswa, until he reached Masjid Quba and then Masjid Jum'a. And then he said to the people of Medina, like everyone was trying to take a lead of the camel. So when Nabi will say, let it go, it will know where to, like to settle. It's commanded by Allah. So they kept following the camel of Nabi Muhammad until the camel settled 
at the most unwanted land in Medina. That land used to be called Mirbat or Marbat. That's like in Arabic how you call it Mirbat or Marbat. It actually means a junkyard, like it will be like, like in the middle of farms. Sometimes in each farm there is a place. So in even the palm trees there, they already burned. Like they, they can't give dates anymore, so they are useless. So this piece of land will be as a junk yard for the people in the city. Not only that, if there is war coming, taking place at the city, and then like there is casualties from the enemy side, there is people who has died. So they will take them, they will bury them in this place in a way like you worth nothing, even we're going to bury you in a junkyard. So this is was how, what's the place where the camel of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam landed. So again, the city Yathrib as a name, it's a wrong place for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to choose. As a community, it's a wrong community for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to choose. As the place where the camel settled, you were given offers by everyone in the city. Come to my house. My house is so big. I can leave the house for you. And yet you say leave the camel and the camel ending up settling in a place which is a junkyard. So you see, but this is my point. I wanted to show the impact of coming of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Nabi came to Medina, the name of the city <coughs> from Yathrib, from badness, it was changed into goodness because of the hijrah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why we call Medina Tayba. It's the opposite of Yathrib. Okay, so now when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, well, he was with the Sahaba in Medina. At that time, they would say like, I'm going to Yathrib. When it comes across the, the blessed ears of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his face will change and then he will look to them and say, Kalla, innaha tayba, innaha tayba, innaha tayba. No, it's goodness, it's goodness, it's goodness. Because the literal meaning of the word Yathrib, it's badness. So when Nabi came with the opposite Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he <coughs> said also in a sound hadith for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man qala lil Madina Yathrib, Whoever called Medina Yathrib, he should make an istighfar. And then he said, Innaha tayba wa innaha taba wa innaha mustataba. It's goodness and it's like more good and like good will come out of it. This is like the city of Medina. And the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, about the soil of Medina. One day that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with the Sahaba and then he just hit the ground of Medina, the dirt of Medina. And then he says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّهَا لَمُؤْمِنَا إِنَّهَا لَمُؤْمِنَا إِنَّهَا لَمُؤْمِنَا The soil of Medina is a believer and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam witnessed that. The air that we're breathing in Medina, Alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a, يعني, هَوَاءٌ مُؤْمِن It's a, what, how you call it, it's a believer air. It's a, it, oxygen that believed in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet, the community of Medina, now the, cha the name changed from Yathrib into Tayba. And then the community of Medina. This house in Khazraj, they became one side and then they called the Ansar, Ansarun Nabi. The, the group that gave victorious to the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And anyone will come to Medina after that, and he's not from Medina, he will be given the title Muhajir, a migrant, that he's not originally from Medina, but he migrated to Medina. So when Nabi for him, he changed the concept of the city, the name of the city itself, the concept of the community of the city, and then third, the place where the camel settled. After it being a junkyard for how many years, when the camel settled there, and then Nabi built his masjid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this place become Rawda min Riyadul Jannah, Garden of the Gardens of Jannah. And this is all to show the impact of the coming of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my point of this talk, my brothers and sisters, me, myself, starting with myself and everyone seeing this, we should make our life as Yathrib in our souls and hearts as like the mirbad, the junkyard, and allow Rasulullah make hijrah to us, allow him to enter to our life. So he will change yathribiyatuna, he will change our badness into goodness. We're going to become tayyibin, we're going to become tayyib. Now I'm yathrib, you are yathrib, we all like just people of Yathrib walking around because of our characters. So we should allow Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to enter to us. And then by that, we're going to be changed from Yathrib into Tayba, into 
good people, like people with good hearts, alhamdulillah. And then our hearts, like the center of our souls and the center of our body, it will be changed into garden of gardens of Jannah because the same thing that happened to the mim to the masjid of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the Nabi settled in it, it was mirbat, it was a junkyard. But when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam moved there, it became garden of gardens of Jannah. So you can carry Jannah inside you, and inshallah, Allah give us all the ability to have that and to have the ability and the strength and the purity and the sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal to be like true lovers of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that to allow us to have the honor of that we could have Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So brothers, this is was the, the, the first point that I'm making inshallah in this session, this uh, session. The other point it will be the hijra of an Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Nabi Muhammad, again, he's 53 years old sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is moving from Mecca. The first three days out of his house, it was in a cave, the cave of Thor. And people were after him. There is a hundred camels on his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mecca, the surrounding of Mecca, it became like filled with so many people looking for any sign, any track that could lead them to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this journey, it's not an easy journey for someone. And he's not young sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's 53 years old. So there is a usual route that people will take from Mecca to Medina. But because like he's wanted at that time, and it was like an everyone knows it and everyone knows there is a hundred camels on the head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This became like an impossible way for him to take. So he chose a different way. The bath of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was farther, harder, even longer to Medina. And then Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Amir wa Abdullah, one of them was a servant, the other one was like a guide for the, for the bath from Mecca to Medina. So two, three days, no food, no water, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made it to the tent of Ummu Ma'bad, which is in, like a Bedouin lady. She was over 60 years old. She was very old. You can tell from her clothes, you can tell from her face, from the skin. Everything was like giving like, this is a poor lady. So when Nabi stopped by her, he gave her salam. And then Nabi asked her if she could just serve them food and water. She had nothing, radiallahu anha. So when Nabi, looked and then she had a goat and that goat was like laying in a way that she's so weak it's about to die so when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at the lady and said what's wrong with the goat she said it's like old ajfa like very old and dying and nabi looked said can i milk it the lady became angry with the nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam like she felt like you know he's making fun of her because you know it's obvious she's dying how could you expect that there is milk coming out of it so she said to Nabi, like, are you mocking me? And Nabi looked at her and smiled and just raised his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma barik lana fi shati ummi ma'bad. Oh Allah, give a barakah, put a place there. And then said, Bismillah, and had a soft touch in it. Insha'Allah, ameen, for me and you and everyone hearing this, that Allah give us this to have the touch of Nabi Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa and Nabi called the goat, he touched the goat. At the same time, it became filled with water, with milk, sorry. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he milked it. She gave him like a big bowl, you know, to fill it. So Nabi filled it all. And then Nabi gave everyone to drink. And he was the last person to drink of it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the lady, Ummu Ba'bad, she feels this man is so blessed because the goat and then the milk, the, the quantity that he could milk it, milk it. So what she did, she, after the Prophet drank of it, she went back, she took it, and then she, like she turned it until she got to the place where there was the blessed lips of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the, the spot where he used it. So she drank from the same spot. She said, Wallahi, I never tasted a sweeter milk than the one I had. And especially the one that was like, both of them were sweet, by the way. The first one, the one that was melted by Nabi, it was sweet. 
more than the normal like other milk and then the other one was even more sweet when she used the same spot of the lips of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the Nabi continued and then at the Juhfa, a place called Al Juhfa between Mecca and Medina, he's been followed by Suraka, which is one of the people. He's like a bounty hunter. But Suraka, there is a story going with him and Nabi Muhammad. Suraka, he came to Mecca on the day that the Prophet went to the cave of Thor. He, ha he had nothing to do with Nabi Muhammad. He was just in the market. So he heard that they will pay a hundred camels. So he led the Meccan people to the cave of Thor. And then there he ended up finding that there is a pigeon and a spider. So for him, Suraka always felt like there is something wrong, you know. He is good at tracking people. So he, he is very sure he has tracked the track of Nabi all the way to the cave of Thor. But when he got to the cave, there is a pigeon and a spider. So this like had him like, many question marks they were like on his head so he just let go of it he went back and Nabi went to Medina at Al Juhfa Suraka managed to follow Nabi so in Al Juhfa Suraka was coming very close to the Prophet and then Nabi was not reacting to it he never looked back Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he will never need to because one of the criteria of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he could see from the back as he see from the front Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when a Nabi physically doing something it's not because he's in a need of it because the other person in a need of it like when a Nabi when someone speaks to the Prophet and Nabi will turn all to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just to show the like the the what they call it the rahma of Nabi I'm, I'm all ears for you but he never needed like if this guy is far it's not like a Nabi can't hear him yani an Nabi he's a akmalul khalq sallallahu alayhi wasallam so Suraka he's becoming close to a Nabi he saw that a Nabi never reacted to it like a Nabi never done anything and yet Suraka is being pushed away from the horse not only that, the horse legs, they were like going down deep into the ground. So Suraka, the first time, he thought this is like something normal. The second time, the third time, he knew. He remembered the cave, the pigeon, the spider, like this is not normal. And now what happened to me, so this is a true messenger of Allah. So Suraka, he asked the Nabi, Al-Aman, Al-Aman, Ya Rasulullah. And we also ask you, Aman, Ya Rasulullah. You are our Aman, Ya Rasulullah. So, an Nabi gave Suraka Aman. And also an Nabi promised Suraka that Allah will reward you with the crown and wrestlers of Kisra, the king from Persia, which happened 16 years after, at the time of Sayyidina Umar bin Al-Khattab, radiallahu an. When Persia was conquered, Sayyidina Umar, he gave the crown to Suraka and commanded Suraka to walk in the streets in the alleys of Medina. So Suraka was walking and well, he was like he was walking up high, you know, with his chest, like he's very proud. And then he will say, Bakhim, Bakhim, Sadaqa, Rasulullah. Whoa, whoa, like Rasulullah has fulfilled his promise to me. That's 16 years after the time of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Suraka passed one week after that so it's like Allah kept him all the way just to fulfill the promise of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then after that he died radiallahu an all the people that we have mentioned in this story they became Muslim Suraka Umm Ma'bad and even her husband and then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam he reached Medina on Yawmul Ithnain 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, the same day of his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَدَخَلَ النَّبِي عَلَىٰ قُبَىٰ And Nabi entered al Medina to the area of Qiba. And at that place, the people of Medina, they were expecting Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come to Medina. So all of them, the whole city came out for Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they, they were welcoming him. And the people at the front, they will say, هَذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ جَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ هَذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Ja Rasulullah and then all of them in one sound together they did like Tala al Badru Alayna Minthani Yatil Wada Wajaba Shukru Alayna Mada Alilahi Da Yeah.
على البدر علينا من ثانيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا يا حبيبي يا محمد يا عروس الخافقين يا مؤيد يا مماجع يا إمام القبلة فلا البدر علينا من ثانيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا أنت شمس أنت بدر أنت نور فوق نور أنت إكسير وغالي أنت مصباح الصدور طال البدر علينا من ثاني وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا ما رأينا لعيسى حنت بسراء إلا إليك والغمام قد أضلت والمالا صلوا عليك طال البدر علينا من ثانيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا اجعل مجتمعنا غاية حسن الختام واعطينا ما قد سألنا من عطاياك الجزال طالع البدر علينا من ثاني الوداع وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا ربي واجعل مجتمعنا غاية حسن الختام واعطينا ما قد سألنا من عطاياك الجزال وكرم الأرواح منا بلقاء خير الأنام وكرم الأرواح منا بلقاء خير الأنام وكرم الأرواح عنا من صلاة وسلام طالع البدر علينا وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا ربي واجعل مجتمعنا 
غايات حسن الختام واعطينا ما قد سألنا من عطاياك الجزال وكرم الأرواح منا بلقاء خير الأنام وكرم الأرواح منا بلقاء خير الأنام وكرم الأرواح منا بلقاء خير الأنام وبلغ المختار عنا من صلاة وسلام طلع البدر علينا من ثنيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه. Uh, so, Bismillah. This is will be also like a side story to show the member of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's also I have chosen the member story because it's a story which has like a love in it from the palm tree, as we know the story of the palm tree for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when Nabi made the hijrah to Medina, his member was like a palm tree. In the mirbat, like there was a palm tree standing there. So when Nabi will stand, will give his khutbah, and then between the two khutbahs, there is the break that the imam needs to do. So when Nabi will just go and replace his blessed arm on the, like the palm tree, and then he will rest there, and then he will continue the khutbah. So this is became like as a member for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the member was feeling that, and he was happy with that, and that's the member in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. While after, like seven years after, and Nabi got a bit elder, so there is one of the Ansariyat from Medina. She came to Nabi. She said, "Ya Rasulullah, I feel like when you are in the masjid, you giving a khutbah. Sometimes you might need to be sitting." So why don't you just allow me and give me the honor that I could fix you like something to sit on? Because she had a slave boy, like a servant who was a carpenter. So he, like she knew that he could do that. And then the Nabi said, Bismillah. So she commanded the, the servant to fix a member for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he fixed a three steps member and the, the wood that they used to make the member was from Shajaratul Athil which is like a type of a tree that grows in the like outskirts of Medina, like just by the countryside of Medina. There are so many of it. So he went, he took like the one that was already like dry and there is no way that it's gonna, you know, fruit again. So he used it and then they fixed the member for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the member was made out of three steps. So when Nabi came, they were in the masjid the day of Jum'ah, just before the salah, the khutbah never started yet. So they walked into the masjid and Nabi looked at them. The member was carried by the two of them walking into the masjid. And Nabi like start making takbir, Allahu Akbar, the sahaba at the masjid said Allahu Akbar. And then they reached to the mihrab of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi praised them and thanked them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Nabi commanded them to replace the member at its place today, the member of the Masjid Nabawi today at the Rawdah. So they replaced the member and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to this member and then he climbed it the first step of the member and then Nabi stood Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ameen. And then climbed it the, the second one and then said, Ameen. And then the third one and then again, Ameen. So, and then he said to the Sahaba, this tree, Ameen, when I was climbing the, like the member, the first step came to me, Jibreel, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, and said to Nabi, رَغِمَ أَنْفُمْ رِئِنْ أَدْرَكَ أَحَدَ أَبَوَيْهِ وَلَمْ يُدْخِلَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ That may the nose 
of anyone that like when you are alive and you have your parents with you and you don't use them as a reason for you to go to Jannah, then you are so, what they call it, like you are so arrogant or ignorant that you should have your nose scratched to the floor as a punish for that because this was like an easy ticket for you to use to Jannah. And then on the second step, he said to him, May the nose of the one that reaches Ramadan and end up from Ramadan, like you there all of Ramadan to the last of it, but you are not forgiven. So your nose should be also scratched to the floor because you just wasted like an easy chance for you. And then the third, May the nose of the people those who hears my name, but they don't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may their nose be scratched to the floors because they, it's not just a normal name that should pass through your ears. So, and then a Nabi reached to the top of the member and then he faced the Qibla. Qibla was like on the other side. So his back was to the masjid, to the Sahaba. And Nabi made a takbir and then a Nabi started reading the, like, just two rakahs, and this was not a fard salah, so it's a sunnah. So no one joined that salah. They were looking at a Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he prayed, he recited like Fatiha, and then a small surah, and then a Nabi made a takbir right on the top, on the third step on the member, and then a Nabi walked down after, the, after he came back from the, tak, from the ruku', he came back up, and then he walked down, backwards while he was at the salah so he's in the salah and he's coming down from the member until he reached all the way down he made a sujood and then he went up again in the salah he did the second raka and then came down again and then then did the second sujood and then he finished the salah down there after that he went back to the member and said to the sahaba i did this so that all of you can see how I pray so that you can do the same way that I did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because by that time the masjid expanded already and there were like some people at the lines at the back of the masjid they wouldn't have clear sight to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about the location of the sahaba at the masjid sahaba they wouldn't just walk into masjid like this like wherever there is a spot I'll pray as we do no sahaba they had their spots based on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas, he said, I always like to go early to the masjid because I want to pray on the right side so that when the Prophet finishes the salah and turns to the right, I'll have the side of the blessed face of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Nabi went back up, he started the khutbah. Everyone is quiet at the masjid. And when the Prophet would be speaking, Sahaba, they were described as if they're birds flying on their heads and birds like they only fly or something is not moving referring to dead so they said this is was the sahaba they never dare to gaze upon nabi muhammad they will sit as if they were making tashahud and then they will break their back like they will just go down like as if they were doing sujood but they will not reach like the sujood but the, in a way that their head will be under nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so and nabi He's giving the khutbah. Suddenly there is a sound like of a young baby crying. So and Nabi knew sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but he wanted to test the sahaba. So he kept until the, the, like the sound, it became like more and more. You know, like when you leave your baby cries for five minutes, it's not like when you come to him for the first minute. So it cried more, you know, out of like the member feeling like it's eating itself from inside. You know what's happened? Rasul used to give the khutbah right here. He left me, astaghfirullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sayyidina Muhammad. So, and Nabi looked at the sahaba and said to them, like, what the member, like, what the palm tree, like how she's crying because of missing me. And then the whole masjid knew, like this sound was coming from the palm tree. And they all went crying with it over Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He walked down, he reached to the palm tree, he hugged it, the palm tree. He dealt with it as it had a soul in it. So Nabi hugged it until it became like he gave her sukoon, you know, tranquility. It became tranquil. 
And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, like everyone heard that, would you rather to be like my member or you rather me to make you a fruitful palm tree in Jannah? And some said like at my doorhouse. So she said to Nabi Muhammad in Jannah, in Jannah. And Nabi said three times. No one heard that answer from her, but that was like they found it this later because an Nabi said at the moment, Ni'ma fa'alt, ni'ma fa'alti, ni'ma fa'alti, like what a good option you just made, what a good option you just made, what a good option you just made. And then an Nabi went back to his member. After that, they took the old palm tree, the old member of Nabi, they bury it under the place of the member of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Nabi passed away, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he was giving the khutbah from the second step, and then Sayyidina Umar from the first, Sayyidina Uthman never came up, Sayyidina Ali, there was like conflict, so most of the time he was out of Medina. At the time of Muawiyah, Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, he came to the masjid, he built a member of six steps, and then he took the three steps, the one of Nabi Muhammad, and replaced it on the top of the sixth steps so it became nine steps member the three the last three on the top were the one that was by the time of nabi muhammad and then from the time of sayyidina muawiyah no one will dare to go to the one at the top they will be standing on the sixth step of the member of the masjid nabawi until the burning took a place at the masjid this member stayed at the masjid for 600 years because of the barak of nabi muhammad never damaged until a burning took a place into the masjid so it only collapsed but it, it was never burned they found it safe and just like as it was but it was collapsed and fixed so they just grabbed it all and then they buried it all at the same spot where they buried the palm tree the old member of nabi muhammad and then they just built a new member for the masjid so this is was the story of the member and then we have the tufula to nabi the 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 early days of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just the, ten, the first 10 months in the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi Muhammad, he would grow in a day as the other kids will grow in a month. So it's like 1 to 3, 1 to 30, like the scale. So in a day, he will grow as someone like other kids growing like a month, 30 days time, period. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he crawled, like crawled uh, at the month of two, when he was two months old, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the fourth month, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was able to walk, but you know, like when you put your hands like on the wall or just on the couch or on the table, that's how he walked, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the, by the fifth month, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could walk straight, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the sixth to the seventh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could hear and he could answer back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the eighth, he could give a clever answer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the nine, he could give it like in a way that it will make you stop. Like if you talk to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just in a way, you know, you said something is not really worth it, talking about it. And then the Nabi will give you an answer, will make you like, you, you, you wouldn't say anything after it. That was the intellect of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the first tenth month of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third or the fourth point will be al bi ayyamillah to celebrate the days of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal has days in the days of the year, as Allah Azza wa Jal has months from all over the month of it. All days are the days of Allah, but those are special days of Allah Azza wa Jal, like the day of Arafah, the day of Eid, the day of Jum'ah. Those were special days. So the day of the birth of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is one of the most special days in our lives, and that's a day that we shouldn't just pass it like that. And that day we would remember that on this day we received the Rahmah. On this day, whatever that we have now in our life, it's because of the emerging of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was born on that day. So this is a day means a lot for me and you and to everyone. 
in that day, and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to the dunya, and then by the 40, he's a messenger of Allah, and then he died sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Hayati khayrun lakum, wa mamati khayrun lakum. My life is good for you, and my dying is good for you. I will die, amutu fat, yani tuhdithuna wa yuhdathu lakum. You will make things and people will make other things, like in a way that, like new thing, inventing things in Islam. And then he says, I have it, I have all your deeds, tu'radu alayya a'malukum. All of our deeds will be presented to Nabi Muhammad, and then the Nabi will check our books, whatever that good we did, and Nabi will praise Allah for it. He will say, Alhamdulillah for that. Alhamdulillah that Sulaiman prayed Isha in a jama'ah. Alhamdulillah that Sulaiman never missed it Fajr. But when he found something wrong, like Sulaiman has riya, has showing off, and Nabi will make istighfar. So whatever I do, whatever you do, it's presented to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before it goes to Allah azza wa jal. And then the next time we're going to see our book is like on the Yawm al-Qiyamah. And by speaking about Yawm al-Qiyamah, we should not be worried about Yawm al-Qiyamah. Because that day, it's the day of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that day, the Ummah will be behind Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On that day, all the prophets and messengers will let go of their people. Like they will say, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, only Nabi Muhammad, me, you, everyone, from the tribulation of the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah and the calamities that will take place there, we all going to be running. This is something going to happen. We're going to be running, looking for like salvation. So we're going to run to who? We're going to run to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we're going to come to him. Ya Rasulullah, we are your ummah. We are your people. And then the Nabi will say, what? he will say, Ana laha. I'm for it. I'm for it. So this is the hope that we keep in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the hope that keeps us not worried about Yawm al-Qiyamah. No matter what we do in this life, just keep a hope. On that day, there is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says there is the sirat. Sirat is like a tiny path. Everyone we need to walk like over that sirat. You need to cross that sirat. And it depends how good we were in this life. Like our deeds will be like engine. So if you're doing good, very well, then you can run. If you're not so well, then maybe walk. People will be like, maybe me just, you know, I fall down. So... And Nabi will be on the other side. He's the first man to cross the surah. So I'm telling you, if you cross the surah, you will never look back. From the feelings that you have while you're crossing the surah, you would never want it to look back even. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the first man to cross the other side of the surah. And then he will stop, he will look back. Until every individual of his ummah cross the surat, and while me, you, everyone crossing the surat, and Nabi will look and say, Allahumma sallim sallim, Allahumma sallim sallim, Allah, oh Allah, please get him safe, like get him safe. And then some say, it when you are too close, he'll pull you, Ya Habibi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after that, he will reach the doors of Jannah, he will knock the doors of Jannah. So the angel behind the door will say like, who is it? He'll say, Muhammad bin Abdullah. And then they say, Rasulullah, marhaba, marhaba. You know, the leaves of the trees of Jannah, they will be like so happy. It's Rasulullah coming into Jannah. So the angels will open the door for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will not go in. He will wait by the door until everyone of his ummah went to Jannah. And then he will go check upon those on hellfire and try to have another intercession going on with Allah Azza wa Jal so that he can bring more people and then he will go to Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So wallahi, ma nakhafu yawm al-qiyamah. We should never be scared of yawm al-qiyamah. And that's why we should never be scared of dying because dying is meeting our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Bilal, at his last day, he was like going through so much pain that he, his wife came to him and then he said to her, you know, I feel like, that's it. It's my night. And then she cried, like in a way, like, you know, a wife losing a husband. He says to her, like, what would you cry? Like, tomorrow, غَدًا نَلْقَى مُحَمَّدًا وَالْأَحِبَّةً Like, why would you cry out of sadness? If you're going to cry, then you should make it, like, out of happiness. 
Because tomorrow I'll meet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the concept that we should keep in our mind, that dying is actually getting closer to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and being with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Yawm al-Qiyamah is the day we're going to show the rest of the alameen who is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what is mean to be a follower is Nabi Muhammad. That, like what's the privilege behind that? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And then we have the story of the camels when they used to come to Medina. The people in Mecca, that was recent. The people at Mecca, at the, like after Hajj, you know, the Hujjaj will be gone back. That was by the days like when people used to come by camels to Medina. And it was like not far from now. So after Hajj, around Safar time, the people of Mecca, they will move from Mecca on their camels all the way to Medina. And if you're riding a camel for a wrong for a, like a long ride at the night, sometimes the camel feels like bored, really. And they like they don't help you by going fast. They will be like easy going. They feel like just, you know, sit down or just stop for the day. So for you on the camel, you need to make some sounds that, you know, you will get the attention. Like you can see the ears of the camel, like they're going back up, like straight up. And the camel's like, you know, now she's having like this, you know, big walk, big step, like, so the people of Mecca, when they, like, every year, they're coming to Medina, the things that they will be saying while they're coming to Medina will be related to Nabi Muhammad and the Green Dome and just, you know, the fairest sight when you come to Medina from this mountain and then, like, when you enter Medina from that valley, everyone will be, like, you know, just using his own mind, his own imagination, and then they will bring like words out. So just to help the camel to move around and then to move faster actually. So those people, when they come like very close to Medina, after the Miqat, whoever comes to Medina knows the Miqat. Like you're already in Medina. After the Miqat, the camels will be coming down. And Miqat is a bit in a higher, like that's the higher land of Medina. So when you're coming from Miqat to Medina, you will be like in a way that you're coming down. So you're going to see the Prophet Masjid. Once the camel takes a sight of the green dome of the masjid, they start running to the masjid. Those guys said, some of them still alive till today, like their fathers said, like we holding, you know, we holding it like we, they hold the camel in a way, you know, you need to pull it back so that it would slow down. They said like it will refuse until like blood will come out of it. And then they says, Wallahi, it will never stop until She's, she like end up by the step of Babu Salam. That's the shawq, the, the, like, the hearing of the camel that coming to Medina. Just in bringing someone that to visit Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this, the acting of like making like a sound or singing for the camel, that came from the grandfather of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, if you go through the book of history, most of the culture of the Arab tribes within the Arab Peninsula was based on the character of the grandfather and the parents of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were the best example to use, subhanAllah. So the grandfather of Sayyidina Muhammad, his name Mudar bin Nizar. One time he was on his camel, so he fell from the camel and he broke his hand. So he just held his hand and then he started saying, like you don't say why and then you just like oh my hand he was like oh my hand like this is how they will make it so when he start doing this the camels at the valley they came around him they gathered around him in a way like what's wrong with you you know, and they came because of the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So from there, Mudar, he knew this sound is something that like, you know, the camels liked it. They're very interested in. So he started using it and then that how spread it around until it was used by the people that used to come to Medina by the camels to visit Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we're going to keep talking about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
we can take days and nights and yet we can only, not we can, that's in only maybe we could like cover a small aspect of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the beauty that we see in the universe, that's a reflection from the original beauty which is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we really, our mind, our logic, our form, our physical shape is not made in a way that we could have a full understanding or awareness of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the only thing that we could do is praise Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because of that, Allah azza wa jal, he made the praising of Nabi Muhammad the key for everything. So if you feel you're going in a hardship, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You need money, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Your kids, they're not listening to you, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You're going to a test tomorrow, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. In the school, there is someone bully you, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You are applying for a new job, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All your life aspect just make salah ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Everything will be given to you. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'ab, he said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, at my day, there is an hour which I made it by myself. I would sit down and then I'll make dua. So I'll only take a portion of it, let's say a quarter, 15 minutes of it. And then in there, I will only be praising you. So the rest of the time will be like, Allahumma wafiqni, or Allah, like, you know, take me to Jannah and all the things that we need and ask Allah for. So Nabi said to him, if you do more, it's good for you. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll make half my time for you. And then he said to him, it's okay, but if you do more, it's good for you. And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll make all of it for you. And Nabi says, Wal'ana tukfa hamuk. Now, whatever bothers you, it will be dealt with. It will be dealt with by Allah. You don't have to even think about it. Before it bothers you, really, it needs you to take an action. Allah will provide a way for you out of it. So this is only because of the Salah ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And by the way, when we make Salah ala Sayyidina Muhammad, we actually not praising Sayyidina Muhammad. We don't know how to praise Sayyidina Muhammad. So we say, oh Allah, please, you praise Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Oh Allah, you are the one to praise Nabi Muhammad. So actually, even when we say we praising Nabi, we're not praising Nabi. We're asking Allah to praise Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something, it's he is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani, only Allah knows what Nabi is. No one can ever describe what Nabi is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those were the points that I would like to share with you guys from Medina. And alhamdulillah, wa again, jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad, may Allah reward Sayyidina Muhammad for everything. And may Allah reward Sayyidina Muhammad like for the things that we don't even know that he did for us as his ummah, as humans living on the, on, on the earth. So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in salatan yaqbaluna biha Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in salatan makes the Prophet smiles for us when he sees us. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad salah that when he sees us, he would hug us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in salah, that when he see us, he will be like ummati, ummati, my people, my people. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in salah, that when he see us, he see us with his face. He never turns his back for us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So jazakum Allah khair. Wa j- and yet whatever happens, ajabun li amri mumin amrahu kulluhu khair. Whatever happens is good for the believer. We used to gather and celebrate and make like big gathering and celebration for the Mawla. But yet now, Alhamdulillah, we're still apart. But we have this technology which we can reach for one another. And yet this is a true time of a be- like two beloveds, you and Nabi Muhammad. Just sit down at your house, make more salah ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And inshallah, may Allah give me and you the honor of seeing Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all going to meet again very soon in Medina. And everyone will get to sit just in the open courtyard of the masjid and just enjoy the view of the green dome and just 
give that talk from you to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. أطير الله مقبرة الكريم بعرف شديد من صلاة وتسليم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل الناس خلقا وخلقا ذا ذات وصفات سنية مربوع القامة أبيض اللون مشربا بحمرة واسع العينين أكحلهما أهدب الأشفار قد منح الزجج حاجبا مفلج الأسنان واسع الفم حسنه واسع الجبين ذا جبهة هلالية سهل الخدين يرافيا فيه بعض حديداب حسان العرنين أقنا بعيد ما بين المنكبين صبط الكتفين ضخم الكراديس قليل لحم العقب كث اللحية عظيم الرأس شعره إلى الشحمة الأذنية وبين كتفيه خاتم النبوات قد عمه النور وعلى وعرقه كاللؤلؤ وعرفه أطيب من النفحات المسكية ويتكفه في مشيته كأنما ينحط من صبب ارتقى وكان يصافح المصافح بيده فيجد من سائر اليوم رائحة عبهرية ويضعها على راس الصبي فيعرف مسه له من بين الصبية ويدرى يتلالا وجهه الشريف تلال القمر في الليلة البدرية صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ناعته لم أرى قبله ولا بعده مثله ولا بشر يرى محمد خير المرسلين وأمهم في ليلة الإسراء ولا شك دنهم فمن دنه الحال ورحماه عمهم جميع العصاة من إنس وجنهم به يسكن الجنات في خير منصب اللهم صل وسلم وبارك به يسكن الجنات في خير منصب اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وصدر كبحر والبحر منه قاصر وقلب وكيع للمعاني حاصر وبذخ مقام لا يداليه معاصر فيا مادح زدنا وإن كنت قاصر مزايا رسول الله عزة وجلت اللهم صل وسلم وبارك مزايا رسول الله عزة وجلت اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه صلاتي على طه الرسول وآله 
دواما لاني مستمسك باوثق حباله كما السعادة الهام في عز جماله وتاه دواما في بديع جلاله الله 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 ونالوا به الحسنى وذاقوا به الاحلى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه ونالوا به الحسنى وذاقوا به الاحلى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم شديد الحياء والتواضع يخصف نعله ويرقع ثوبه ويحلب شاته ويسير في خدمة أهله ويسير في خدمة أهله بسيرة سرية ويحب المساكين ويجلس معهم ويعود مرضاهم ويشيع جنائزهم ولا يحقر فقيرا ادقعه الفقر واشواه صلى الله عليه ويقبل المعذرة ولا يقابل احدا بما يكره ويمشي مع الارملة وذوي العبودية ولا يهاب الملوك ويغضب لله تعالى ويرضى لرضاه ويمشي خلف اصحابه ويقول خلوا ظهري للملائكة الروحانية ويركب البعير والفرس والبغلة وحمارا بعض الملوك إليه أهدا ويعصب على بغله الحجر من الجوع وقد أوتي مفاتيح الخزائن الأرضية وراودته الجبال بأن تكون له ذهبا فابا وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقل له ويبدأ من لقيه بالسلام ويطيل الصلاة ويقصر الخطب الجمعية ويتألف أهل الشرف ويكرم أهل الفضل ويمزح ولا يقول إلا حقا يحبه الله تعالى ويرضاه على الاضطراد في الحلبة البيانية وبلغ ضائع الإملاء في فدا في دله ضاح منتهى عطر اللهم قبره الكريم بعرف شديد من صلاة وتسليم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه